Lions figure prominently on the royal arms of the United Kingdom. Lions are part of both the Royal Arms of England and the Royal Arms of Scotland, as well as the Badge of Wales. One of the supporters of the Royal Arms is a crowned lion gardent, which represents England, opposite the unicorn, which represents Scotland. And it's a lot of lions to put on the Royal Arms, given that lions have not been native to the British Isles since the cave lion went extinct, somewhere between 14 and 12,000 years ago. But there is a type of lion that, if not native to the United Kingdom, it has at least thrived there since prehistory and has played an absolutely central role in the history of the United Kingdom, even though it's not exactly represented on the royal arms. But the long-wooled breed of sheep called the Cotswold Lion that has been so central to English history is now listed as at risk and might itself become forgotten history. Research published in the journal Nature Communications in 2018 suggests that sheep were first domesticated in the Fertile Crescent some 10,500 years ago, thousands of years before the domestication of pigs, cattle, or horses. Initially raised for meat, milk, and skins, archaeological evidence from Iran suggests that wool garments, as opposed to simply sheepskins, were being produced in the 4th millennium BC. The technology spread to Europe. The website Odyssey Traveler explains that archaeological evidence reveals that primitive tribes were breeding domesticated sheep across northern Europe from as early as 6000 BC. And from there, domesticated sheep traveled to one of the places most famous for them today, England. Odyssey Traveler continues, Soon, Neolithic shepherds, with the help of the first sheepdogs, began to migrate the sheep into new lands, eventually reaching the British Isles around 4000 BC. The clothier Navy Gray notes on their website that we know that by 1900 BC, wool was being spun and woven for clothing in England. A piece of woolen cloth from this time was found in an oak coffin buried in an early Bronze Age barrow in Yorkshire. Odyssey Traveler concludes, By the time the Romans conquered Britain, there already existed a thriving wool industry, with British woven cloth considered a luxury item. The Roman conquest of Britain began with an invasion in 43 AD under Emperor Claudius. The magazine Country Life speculated that General Aulus Plautius, the first governor of Roman Britain, sent cavalry west in 47 AD, where they found a land of gentle limestone hills between the Thames and the Severn. The land in the central southwest of the island, with its underlying bedrock of Jurassic limestone, is a rolling and fecund grassland, and the Romans quickly established a fort in the area that would grow to become the second largest settlement in Roman Britain, behind Londinium, Corinium Dobinorum today known as the city of Siren Sister. The land, today known as the Cotswolds, was occupied by a tribe friendly to the Romans, the Dabuni, and also by sheep. The sheep for which the area is known and likely named today are a long-wooled breed called Cotswolds Lions. Queenford Farm writes that the heavy wool ruffs which formed around the necks of the sheep when they were in full wool over winter looked rather like lions' manes, and so they became known as Cotswold Lions. But exactly what sheep the Romans found in Corinium is a matter of dispute. British naturalist Henry John Elwes speculated in 1897 that the long-wooled breeds were already present when the Romans arrived. And the website of the American Cotswold Record Association even asserts that some early traditions say that the sheep was brought to England by the Phoenicians sometime between 500 BC and 100 BC. But others suggest that the Romans imported sheep from the empire to breed with local sheep. Country Life writes that the area was grazed by the primitive small sheep of the Dobuni tribe, for the indigenous Neolithic ones had poor fleece. The website of Queensford Farm, which raises sheep today, says, Archaeological excavations have revealed that soon after the Romans arrived, larger, long-wooled sheep started appearing in Britain. It's not known where these sheep originated from within the Roman Empire, though theories abound. And Country Life writes that the Roman Empire reared sheep extensively, and it is generally understood that the famous Cotswold animal... Large, sturdy, with a friendly, amused expression, a hardy constitution, good maternal instinct, long, thick, lustrous wool, and curly ringlets on a broad, hornless forehead, descends with improvement from Roman introduction. In any case, the website Sheep Caretakers calls Cotswold sheep one of the oldest sheep breeds. In a 1956 essay quoted on the website of the Cotswold Sheep Society explains that Cotswold sheep may said to be as old as the hills. Travel writer John Eckersley noted on his webpage that some people think that the Cotswold lions were first brought to this country by the Romans, although others believe that the breed was already here when they arrived. 
whichever view is correct. They thrived on the rich grassland of the limestone hills and for centuries provided meat and wool for their owners. The Romans recognized the value of both the land and the sheep. The website Cotswold.info writes that here in the Cotswolds, the Romans developed sheep farming on their big estates around Sirencester. They were perhaps building on methods and techniques learnt from the Celtic Britons. Although they add that it is probable that in Roman Britain the sheep were smaller and therefore produced less wool. Odyssey Traveler notes that before long wool had become Britain's most valuable commodity, with the Romans fetching top prices for the high-quality product in foreign lands. Country Life writes that Cotswold wool-clad Roman soldiers, and Tacitus recorded extensive clothing trade with Corinium in the 1st century AD. This trade continued through the Roman period. The website Wool Duvet writes that the Edict of Diocletian, a summary of traded goods across the Roman Empire and published in 301 AD, put the British Beerus, a hooded cape of wool, high on the list of quality and price, and the British Tepetia, a wool rug, as first-class grades ahead of all others on the list. This suggests that the wool was the single most important product in Roman Britain. Historian J.P. Wilde wrote in a 2002 article in the Journal Britannia, No other British product was deemed worthy by the compiler of the edict. Prima facie, therefore, one could argue that textile production was Britain's leading industry by the late 3rd century A.D. And the sheep would outlast the Romans. Country Life writes that Rome declined and fell, and in about 410 its legions withdrew. The sheep remained here undisturbed. Although pagan Saxons defeated the Romano-British near Bath in 577, by 800 they were church-building, sheep-loving Christian farmers. The abbess of Gloucester owned extensive Cotswold sheep walks, and sheep were kept at the many places called Shipton. In 796, Charlemagne himself sought Cotswold cloaks. The website Historical Clothing notes that international trade was limited after the departure of the Romans. English agriculture was mostly subsistence. Only gradually did trade develop. But wool was one of the products produced in England. It was particularly valuable because, unlike most agricultural products, it could be shipped long distances without deteriorating. British Heritage Travel writes that when the Romans withdrew from Britain, the flocks passed into the hands of local landowners, first the church and then local families. Sheep were put out to graze, fleeces were traded, and fortunes were made. In fact, it is likely that the term Cotswolds is derived from the sheep, Author Alan Jones wrote in his 2002 book, A Cotswold Miscellany, For more than a thousand years, the English wool trade was centered on the Cotswolds. The very name derives from the Saxon coat, a sheepfold. Cotswold.info writes that the sheep were grazed in large cots or enclosures. The enclosures were sited on the wolds or hills. So a literal translation of Cotswolds is sheep hills, although there are alternative suggestions for the etymology of the name. And through the long and conflict-ridden history of England, the Cotswold sheep endured. Country Life writes that Viking slave traders laid waste from Gloucester to Chippenham in 877, then lingered in Sirencester. The flocks survived this too, doubtless because Norsemen appreciated wool, both to wear on their chilly expeditions and for sales. And they continue, Cotswold sheep, secure in the breeze and drizzle of their remoteness, escaped the warfare of Alfred and subsequent Saxon rulers. Odyssey Travel writes the English climate had made a significant impact on the quality of the local wool. Through the process of evolution and natural selection, the wool had become unusually long and strong, but also soft and thick. By the time of the Norman Conquest, it was the finest raw material for cloth in the world. Country Life writes the Normans, after initial rapine, brought order and extensive ecclesiastical sheep farming prospered. Doomsday records from 1086 specified the queen's entitlement to wool from around Siren Sister. The sheep were so important that they dramatically affected the environment of Great Britain. Odyssey Travel explains that large numbers of wolves across England were making it impossible to adequately protect the sheep. The predators needed to be exterminated. So between 1066 and 1152 AD, Norman kings employed servants as wolf hunters and often organized wolf hunting parties. By the early 1200s, King John was offering a sizable reward for the capture of wolves at five shillings a pelt. Edward I went even further, ordering the total extermination of all wolves in the kingdom. Entire woodlands were cut down for this reason, and the culling was successful. Wolves had become very rare by the late medieval period, and by the 15th century, they were extinct. As the wolves went away, the money rolled in. Odyssey travel continues. England had successfully been turned into a giant sheep farm which in turn had created a new sort of economy and society. 
The wool was so valuable that the Cotswold lions played an important role in the life of the famous lion-hearted king, Richard I. Country Life writes that in 1193, Cistercian monks are said to have provided 50,000 sacks of wool towards the ransom of Richard I, who had carelessly allowed himself to be captured when returning from the Third Crusade, although the magazine admits that the accuracy of this astounding number is questionable. The travel website Butterfield and Robinson writes that the golden age of the wool trade was during 1250 to 1350, and it was Cotswold sheep, bred for both wool and meat, that were renowned across Europe, to the point where Italian merchants would travel to the Cotswolds to purchase the fine wool. Richard Martin, a graduate in medieval and modern history at University College London, writes that perhaps 500,000 sheep roamed the Cotswolds, and most of their wool was exported to Flanders and Lombardy, more densely populated countries which could not spare land for wool growing. Thousands upon thousands of pack horses laden with wool bales wound their way down from the high Cotswold Hills to the Thames. They crossed the river at Redcott and proceeded southwards to Southampton and saw their loads shipped on barges to London. Country Life writes that in the 14th and 15th centuries, great galleys, Florentine, Genoese, and Venetian, armed to deter pirates, swept flamboyantly into Southampton to collect Cotswold wool and deliver dye stuffs and alum and woad. And while wool was produced all over the island, the Cotswold lion was, well, king. A common saying in Flanders was, the best wool in Europe is England, and the best wool in England is Cotswold. Country Life writes that Tuscan merchant Francisco de Tini regularly visited Northleach in Burford, observing in Italian that the finest and most expensive wool was from the Cotswolds. On this trade rode the nation. Historic UK writes that by 1290 it is estimated that there were some 5 million sheep in England producing around 30,000 wool sacks a year. Just a century later, in the reign of Henry V, almost 63% of the crown's total income came from the tax on wool. Indeed, the beating heart of the national wealth. And that trade continued to drive history. Odyssey Travelers notes that King Edward III in particular was encouraged to go to war with France with the knowledge England was better resourced, resulting in the Hundred Years' War fought between 1337 and 1453. The cause of the Hundred Years' War in itself was partly to protect the Flanders wool trade, with burghers from the rich Flemish cloth towns appealing to Edward III for help against their French overlords. Wool was so important that since the reign of Edward III, that Lord Chancellor of England, today the Lord Speaker of the House of Lords, sits on a woolen cushion called the wool sack, which symbolizes the central nature of the wool trade to the English economy in the Middle Ages. Even the Black Death couldn't damage the wool trade, Country Life explains that shortage of manpower greatly encouraged sheep farming, for one man could look after 500 animals. Between 1280 and 1365, wool exports doubled. By the 16th century, Country Life writes, the golden-fleeced Cotswold lions stood triumphant at their zenith, a priceless rustic diadem, the bleeding heart of the nation's wealth, and the basis of Henry VIII's dazzling display at the field of the cloth of gold. In the 17th century, the wool trade was so important that the king made it mandatory. Butterfield and Robinson explained that, in fact, King Charles II passed an act in Parliament expressly to increase consumption of English wool, most notably in the Burial in Wool Acts of 1667 and 1678 that decreed that all bodies were to be buried in a shroud of wool only, in a wool-lined coffin. Otherwise, you could expect to incur a five-pound fine. Devin Duvays writes that by the end of the 17th century, wool cloth amounted to over 65% of the value of British exports. Historian Anton Hughes argues that trade in woolen cloth, exported primarily through London, was a significant factor in the city's near tenfold growth from around 50,000 inhabitants in 1550 to half a million by 1700. And that wealth also came to define the architecture that is a prime reason that Cotswold is a popular destination today, the so-called wool churches often built from the limestone upon which the Cotswolds rest. Britain Express writes that the prosperous wool merchants put back some of the money that they earned into their local communities, often by building manors for themselves, but just as frequently by endowing their parish churches. The wool churches of the Cotswolds are among the most elaborate and architecturally attractive in the entire country due to the largesse of successful wool merchants. Historian Lionel F.J. Walward was quoted on the webpage Cotswold Weavers. The story of wool and woolen cloth like the yarn itself, weaves its way into every aspect of Cotswold life. Not only has history revolved around its fortunes, but it has profoundly influenced the landscape, the villages and towns, the churches and the mills, and the people themselves. Odyssey Traveler writes simply, Over its long history, English wool has helped to start wars, 
drive large-scale migration, form English culture and language, and fund some of the country's grandest architecture. The wool trade declined in the Cotswolds in the 18th and 19th century in the face of industrial production methods. Cotswold.info notes that, ironically, that is part of the popularity of the Cotswolds today, as the collapse of the wool trade left little money for additional building, leaving quaint, scenic rural villages that appear to be frozen in time and are so popular with modern tourists. Today, the sheep that built England is nearly forgotten history considered a rare breed that is, according to the Rare Breeds Survival Trust, at risk. Although Cotswold.information writes that the breed is expanding again, and there are now more than 50 flocks, many of them in the Cotswolds. Although not yet numerous as in past centuries, they write, the breed that brought so much to this beautiful area is safe and secure. The Cotswold lion can make a good claim to have been the most important animal in British history. Historian Patricia Smith wrote on the website Historic Cornwall, the British Empire would not have been possible without the humble sheep. If the pillar of the royal arms of the United Kingdom was to truly represent England, the crowned lion gardened should be a Cotswold lion. I hope you enjoyed watching this episode of The History Guy. And if you did, please feel free to like and subscribe and share The History Guy with your friends. And if you also believe that history deserves to be remembered, then you can support The History Guy as a member on YouTube, a supporter on our community and locals, or as a patron on Patreon. You can also check out our great merchandise shop or book a special message from The History Guy on Cameo.